So today we're looking at the first exercises in my free classical guitar method book. So there's a link for that book underneath the video if you don't already have it. It's a free PDF. There's no sign up required. You just download the PDF. So, and this is the first actual playing exercises on the guitar. So we're covering today the notes for etude number one, the rhythms for etude number one, etude number one, and then also we'll cover etude number two. This, these four things would pretty much cover your first lesson on the classical guitar. There's some prep to do before actually first playing, but this would cover the your first lesson and etude number one, we just play a, um, essentially a melody, so a single line melodic melody. And then the second, etude number two, is an arpeggio. So we're learning melodies and arpeggios and making sure beginner players can do that on the open strings of the guitar. Before you um, play this, make sure you've checked out three lessons that are part of the method book. And all the method book lessons are free to watch, so you can also just watch it all for free, right? Um, you have to watch the lesson on posture and sitting position, so how to sit with the guitar. It's very important that you're sitting properly. I'll go over a couple tips today, but really you have to look at the dedicated lesson on posture and sitting. And then you have to look at the right hand lesson. So the lesson on right hand technique and left right hand position. We're not using the left hand today, so we don't have to worry about that. So you just have to watch those two technique lessons before you play this. And then the last thing you should watch is the introduction to music notation. So I have a, an article on the site that introduces you to music notation, just so you can get your bearings and, and keep everything straight and you're not too confused about reading music for the first time. But um, lots of things to cover, so let's just dive right in. So there's going to, we're going to learn three notes right now, E, B, and G. E is located on the first string. We call this the first string down here, so the string that's closest to your feet. And we call that the high E string because it's high in pitch. I know it's low to the ground, but it's high in pitch. This is low in pitch. That's high in pitch. So this, that's E on the first string. Then we're learning B, that's the second string. And then G, that's the third string. And we call these open strings because they, they don't require any left hand fingers. So they're usually labeled with a zero. So the numbers above the notes on the staff are fingering numbers. And when a string is open, we just put a zero. So E, B, and G. And then you can complete the note naming exercise in the book just to make sure you're, you can recognize what those notes look like on the musical staff. Okay, let's move on to actual playing. So rhythms for etude number one. So before we begin, again, make sure you're sitting up straight. You've watched that video already. The head of the guitar is about at eye level. The guitar is at this 45 degree angle. Your right hand is just, you. Uh, by the way, you can use either a footstool or a guitar support. Um, it doesn't matter which one you use. I usually recommend students use a footstool, but these days um, it's, it's half and half. Lots of people are using um, guitar supports. And of course I have um, videos and information and lessons on that as well. You can check out what gear to use. Um, that's also part of the method book lessons. So rhythms for etude number one. So we're sitting properly, we bring our right hand down here, and we rest on the forearm in front of the elbow. That gives our hand enough support so it can just kind of stay there. We're gonna rest our thumb on a bass string just to secure or anchor the right hand and stabilize it. And then the first line is quarter notes. Quarter notes count for one beat in this time signature, so there's four beats per bar. So we're gonna be counting one, two, three, four, while we play. And we'll be alternating our fingers. I, M, I, M. So the fingers on the right hand are P, I, M, A. We're using I and M. So playing E on the first string in quarter notes. One, two, three, four, one, It's 
very important that we alternate our fingers. This is very important. This is why we start with no left hand, just the right hand. So I am, I am. It's like a when I'm teaching kids, it's like it's a little running person, right? Left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. We don't want to hop on one leg. So we're alternating our right hand fingers. Let's play B half notes. So B is the second string and half notes count for two beats. So there'll be two counts of the beat for each one. I'll demonstrate. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You might have a number of questions about music notation that are running through your head. Try not to worry about them too much. You have to start playing to get oriented. You've watched my previous video on reading music notation, so you have some idea of what it's all about. But at some point, you just have to dive into this book and start playing to gain some experience. And then when you review it the next day, you'll start to feel like, oh, I think I have an understanding of this. So, but at some point, just like kids, you have to, like, you have to dive in and do it and make mistakes and, um, and not know everything at once, right? Okay, let's play G, that's the third string, with whole notes. Whole notes count for four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then we'll stop the sound. So we did three different types of notes there. Quarter notes count for one beat. Half notes count for two. Whole notes count for four. Let's do the last exercise on page on this page. Um, mixed rhythms. So there'll be quarter notes, half notes, and whole notes. Using just the E string, the first string. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let me do that one more time. Mixed rhythms. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You're just watching the video to get an idea of what you're supposed to do. You don't have to play along with me because um, I want you to become the teacher when you're playing and you're practicing. So you're going to count out loud and play and you should also practice a couple times saying the right hand fingerings out loud like I am, I am, I am, I am. Practice counting out loud and playing. Practice saying the right hand fingers as you play. This is what teachers do all day when they're demonstrating to their students and it's really good practice for you. It means you'll truly understand it and don't say it inside your head. Say it out loud. Saying things out loud make them real. Sometimes when we say things inside of our head, we um, can fool ourselves into doing it right. But by saying it out loud, it's like a real physical motion that we connect with. Okay, etude number one, melody. So when we play melody on the guitar, we're going to be playing with I am fingering like this, and we're using just those three strings that we learned, E, B, and G. Just remember to alternate your fingers. So before you play the piece, you should name the notes without playing. So just going like E, 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 B, 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 E, E. You know, go through the whole piece naming the notes to make sure you're actually learning music notation. Name the rhythms. So quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, half note, half note, quarter note, quarter note, etc., etc. Just make sure you know the rhythms. And then say the right hand fingering out loud as you play. I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. Go through the piece saying the right hand fingering out loud to make sure that you're actually doing the right, correct fingering. And then count the beat as you play. And I'm going to count the beat as I play today just to make sure that we're, we're getting the rhythm correct. Before I begin, I'm going to actually count one bar of counting before I start playing. That will help me um, get into the rhythm. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just
just to make sure that I, I'm thinking about rhythm before I start playing. So here's etude number one, melody. I'm going to rest my thumb on a right hand string. I have good posture, good right hand position. I'm stabilized by resting my forearm on the guitar. One, two, three, four. 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 One tip for you is make sure when you have long notes, like the whole note at the very end of the piece, that you let it ring for four full beats. One, two, three, four, cut. Not like this. One, two, three, four. Because it actually lasts for four whole beats. So you have to make sure that you, you go all the way to the imaginary next beat when you cut the sound. Um, you don't have to worry about much right now. This is a very simple piece, but we're trying to be um, good musicians, even though the piece um, we're good musicians, even though we're beginners. So we're playing simple music, but we're playing it as a good musician, meaning that um, we're playing with a good sense of the of the beat, very consistent rhythms throughout the piece. We're using good technique the whole time, um, so you can be a good musician even though the piece is really simple. Um, the only other thing I'll say is that um, make sure you're letting the notes ring. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Though that note has to ring through there. So don't put your finger back on the string. One, two. If you put your finger back on the string, like the next finger, it's going to stop the sound. So try your best to let it ring for, for its value. In terms of um, more specific right hand technique, try to move your fingers in towards the palm, not yank them out like this. We don't want this, we want this. So our fingers are just moving in, they're not yanking out like this. Sometimes you can test that just by putting something in front of your finger. If you're kicking it out, then you're probably not using quite the right technique. You want to try your best to move your fingers in towards your palm. Okay, let's play etude number two now, arpeggios. Arpeggios are chords, but instead of strumming the chords, we are playing the notes or playing them as a block chord. We're gonna play the notes individually. So instead of this, we're playing notes individually. We're going to play G, B, E, B using the thumb, uh, P, on the third string, I, the index finger, on the second string, and M, the middle finger, on the high E string. We're going to go third string, second string, first string, second string, or with right hand fingering names, P, I, M, and we're going to try to let all those notes ring out. So I won't put my fingers back on the strings after playing. I'll let them just ring out. So let me play you the piece, and then we'll, we'll have a couple more tips. One, two, three, four.
I know that this are this agent number two, it sounds kind of like a little, just an exercise, but you want to start playing pieces from the first lessons, playing it from start to finish as a piece. You have to you have to imagine it's um, a little bit um, uh, more than it is maybe, but it's really important that even as a beginner, you are playing full pieces. You're cutting the sound at the end. You're being as musical as possible. You're trying to present it in a very musical way, because all the skills you're learning right now are going to um, affect the pieces that you learn after, and the pieces will get more difficult soon. But right now, we're trying to be good musicians with nice, simple music. So it's, it's important that you play it as if it's a real uh, masterpiece, right? Okay, so a couple things about this piece. Um, let all the notes um, sustain. We already talked about that. You should count out loud when you play it. So it's four beats per bar. So the counting would be this. One, two, three. When you're playing, keep the, the thumb in front of the fingers, not by twisting your wrist, but just by keeping your, your fingers and your thumbs separate. You don't want there to be traffic jams or like getting caught underneath a finger or something like that. You want to keep the, the thumb and the fingers free from each other and that will help um, avoid any conflicts between the fingers. If your guitar position is bad, then, then the thumb will probably be there. The more you angle it in the proper way, the thumb just naturally stays in the right place. So it's not just about changing your hand position, it's also about um, your guitar posture. So lots of little adjustments can equal good technique. So you'll have to review those, those technique videos again and again, and also watch professional players and see what they look like when they're playing. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is that rit at the end, the ritardando. Um, we use these Italian words in music. Um, it's kind of a, music is a universal language, but some of the terminology in, in uh, classical music emanating from Europe um, uses Italian terms. Uh, ritardando is um, indicating a slowing down of the tempo. So on the last line of etude number two, we're, we are keeping a steady beat. Then we are slowing down. Um, it's, it's like when you're driving a car and you're pulling up to a stop sign. Instead of slamming on the brakes and, and shocking everyone with the stop, um, you, you push on the brakes slowly and come to a gradual stop, preparing people in the car, the rest of your passengers, for the, the fact that the car is stopping so they don't spill their coffee or whatever, right? Same thing in music. Instead of uh, abruptly arriving at the end, um, we will sometimes, not always, but sometimes, especially when there's a writ written, uh, we will t stop the piece gradually um, to prepare people for the final note. Um, this is, isn't something we add all the time necessarily, and we don't want to abuse it by doing too much of it, but nevertheless, that is the term, and it's up to the performer as to how much writ they want to do, if they want to slow down a lot, or just very subtly slow down. So there's more, there's options. You could do this. That would be a subtle slowdown, or you could do a real deep writ. which really prepares that final note. So those are the first two pieces, A2 number one and A2 number two, melody and arpeggios. Keep all those tips in mind, review all the lessons that you have to review, and um, spend some good time on this. I know you might think that you can do it from the very first lesson and you think it's too easy, 
and not interesting enough. But remember, I want you to be a very good musician with these two pieces. I want you to be a very good guitarist as well. So you're going to play it like a pro, but nevertheless, the music will be nice and simple. So spend some good time on there getting good, a good sound and getting comfortable with the posture and everything like that, being rock solid with your counting and playing before you move on to the next pieces.